being off his line, you know, you can't nobody run from you. You can be nasty as you want, dirty. <laughs> like, I mean, just destroy somebody. Can't run from me. You gotta face me head on. I just love that. LSU has always been known as a football school. Recently, they have made headlines for winning their first national title in women's basketball. Bringing it back to football, they had one of the most highly recruited offensive linemen of all time enter the transfer portal. The school with the best chance of landing him right now is an HBCU. Who is the player? Why is he leaving LSU? And does FAMU actually have a shot at landing him? This is the story of yet another trailblazer who is out to bring black cards back to prominence. This is the story of Cardell Thomas. Thomas is a six foot three, 356 pound offensive lineman from Baton Rouge, Louisiana, where he attended Southern Lab High School. For those of you who aren't familiar with the program, Southern Lab is sort of a feeder school or a little brother to Southern University, also located in the same city. Thomas was a four-star recruit in the class of 2019. He was rated as the fourth best guard in the nation, the fourth best player in Louisiana, and the 97th best player in the country. This guy was all world in high school. He was named to every all whatever team you could think of. His strength, size, and run blocking is where scouts thought he excelled. Watching his tape, you kind of feel bad for those players who lined up against him because they didn't stand a chance. Other than his skills, he really became known for his personality. I'm gonna run the fly, I'm gonna just mouse him, you know, lip on. Yeah. That's all, something, something simple. Showing what I'm doing, but you know, he ain't gonna be able to stop it. I vividly remember, back in 2017, 2018, seeing all sorts of day in the life videos about this guy. Just thinking, he was gonna be a dog on the next level. Coming out of high school, he had 19 offers from the cream of the crop programs, USC, Bama, Oklahoma, Miami, Georgia, Florida, LSU. You get the picture. After spending several seasons with the Tigers, the red shirt junior announced in January that he will be entering the transfer portal for his last two years of eligibility. He had this to say about his departure. Quote, unfortunately, my time here at LSU did not pan out the way I expected. But regardless, I am forever grateful for the opportunity given. I believe in order for me to grow and be the best version of myself, I have to make a decision that will allow for that to occur. End quote. So why didn't it work out for Thomas at LSU? Those same scouts that praised Cardell for having ideal size and strength also talked about his weaknesses, mainly his mobility. Carrying around over 300 pounds is a lot on any frame, especially when you're only 6'3". Specifically, his weaknesses coming out of high school were his pass blocking, feet, body quickness, and second level blocking. I assume the coaches just didn't trust him enough to keep him out there on every snap. All the signs were there, even from the beginning. This happens in basketball all the time. You watch a high school highlight tape of a guy jumping over the entire team or making a highlight crossover reel. The same thing happened in this case. After signing out of Southern Lab as the nation's number four offensive guard in 2019, Thomas never could consistently crack the starting lineup. He started the final four regular season games in 2021, then moved into a backup role again last season. Thomas appeared in 11 career games. Thomas made headlines earlier this week, where he announced on Twitter that he will be visiting FAMU on April 15th. This is huge news for the Rattlers. It will be a major addition both on the field and in terms of business. The big fella has an infectious personality, and I can see endorsement deals flooding in for him. I'm not sure who I need to talk to, but we need a Hard Knocks HBCU edition. The Coach Prime thing was cool over the last couple years, but we need to start switching schools every year. That would be fire in my opinion. What do y'all think? Let me know down in the comments. For all you young people out there, or just negative Nancy's that think this idea would never work, it's already happened before, in a way. Look it up. The show was called College Hill and had a run from 04 to 09. This was back when BET had TV shows 
specifically catered to African Americans. The show went on for six seasons and took place on some of your favorite college campuses. Southern University, Langston University, Virginia State, the University of the Virgin Islands, and Clark Atlanta and Morehouse. This will be huge and could be a resume builder for anyone who wants to get into television or communications. When the show does pop off, just remember where you heard the idea first. HBCU Plus, get to it. This is free money for schools without having to beg alumni to donate anymore. NIL deals would go crazy and enrollment at smaller schools would increase exponentially. You never know. If we're loud enough and it brings enough money to the school, it possibly could happen. Shout out to the best recruiter in all of HBCU football, Coach Devin Rispers. In this photo, he's seen with the LA Rams scout, so he's connected as well. In almost everything in life, it's not what you know, but who you know. FAMU has already shown that they can get players to the NFL. Keep it up and you will keep continuing to land top-notch talent like Thomas. As I'm finishing up this video, the GOAT recruiter down in Tallahassee did it again. Doing this consistently with the lack of resources is just next level. On April 7th, this past Friday, they had another four-star offensive lineman walk in the halls. But this guy is still in high school. Meet four-star, top 100, in Georgia commit, and six foot five, 315 pound, Micah DeBose. But I have a video coming up about him, so I won't get into too much detail now. Just imagine the offensive line with these two plugging up the holes. It's just in the trenches where the talent is woefully lagging behind the big power five programs. The fact that fam, you can even get these elite guys to visit, even if they don't commit, is huge. The kids are watching. And these last couple years were massive and we have to keep building on it. We just have to continue to put a good product out on the field and make yourselves visible. ESPN is cool, but if they don't want to show the games anymore, no big deal. Build your own platforms and networks like every other conference does. Split the profits amongst yourselves. Stop fighting for crumbs from these dinosaur TV networks. Only 65% of Americans still have cable anyways, but everyone has a phone. Take a leap of faith and just go digital. The Rattlers have an incredible shot at landing him. He hasn't mentioned any other school since hitting the portal and has constantly shown love for HBCU programs on his social media. He's even pinned this tweet, quote, decided for my FAMU official visit April 15th, end quote. I'm honestly kind of shocked that Grambling State and Southern haven't been mentioned by the big fella, especially since he's from that area, but I can't blame him. I've seen some of the women that go to FAMU and I completely understand. If you know, you know. As I often say, only time will tell. Thanks for watching the video. If you made it to the end, type in him in the comment section. I wanna hear from y'all. What do y'all think of this entire situation? How do y'all feel about once highly ranked players going to HBCUs? Will he make an impact at FAMU? And does he have what it takes to get to the NFL? As always, if you enjoyed the video, please like, comment, and subscribe. We out of here. Peace.